Nocturnal Emissions here at WBCN in Boston, and we are very, very proud to have live in the studio, Jeff Buckley. Hi, everybody. <laughs> We're missing Mickey, the bass player, and we love him very much, and we hope the move goes all right. Meanwhile... <laughs>
Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Sorry. Song of the year. Yeah, it's, it's a bit hard to play, really. Oh. When did you write this song, Grace, in particular? Oh, with Gary Lucas about maybe two years ago. I think one or two years ago. Now, Gary's not here, right? No, he's not with us today. Does he, does he, I know he plays on the album, but does he play with you? Sometimes. But, uh, uh, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I'm more concentrating on the band, but I'm sure we'll, I'm positive we'll get together some other time. No, Michael Ty is on guitar next year. Yeah. And Michael got, Ty and Matt Johnson. Matt Johnson back on the drums. Good sound levels were fine there. <laughs> Jeff, what was the first song you ever wrote? Uh, a piece of crap. Piece of crap. <laughs> and when was that? Probably about 14. 14. I burned everything, actually. All my notes, all my poetry. At, at one point, I was probably 19. I don't know. I, was a, I got into a horrible mood. So it's all gone. <laughs> so I'm just starting from scratch. Which coast was this on? I also advise people not to do that. That's on West Coast. I, I, I came to the West Coast in 90. I'm sorry, I came to the East Coast in 90. Now you regret that? You wish you had saved it? Sometimes. But it's... I don't know. Those snapshots are hard to look at. That's all. You want to do another song? Please. sleep tonight on your couch I remember the smell of the fabric of your simple city dress And the wind blew an invocation But I fell asleep at the gate And I never stepped on the cracks Cause I thought I'd hurt my mother From the nightmare that sucked me in and pulled me under, pulled me under.
sorry about that. How about what? I also messed up the verses in Grace. <laughs> well, these are special. It's a drag, really. <laughs> but uh, it's just it's just raw and raw and unplugged. Yeah. Right here. I've, actually, live I've, I've done it right almost every time. So <laughs> I can mess up here on live radio. Well, you can mess up tomorrow too. You're playing at the Charles Playhouse, 8 p.m. Yeah, I'll mess up all night. <laughs> the, whole, the whole show is built around messing up. What else you want to know? I want to know if you were ever in a choir. Never. I never. The guitar took me away from the church early on. Are you a permanent East Coast resident now? Yes. I'll never leave. Well, I mean. The thing about New York is that you always leave, but I don't feel like making my home anywhere else. It's great. It's perfect. So what's special about New York? What makes Jeff Buckley love New York? Um, just the rhythm of it, really. It's not even the, the music. Like, I didn't move there just to be in the music scene at all. I just went there because I knew that life would be... Like, just... It makes sense that you can eat 24 hours a day. You can find your favorite cafe right on that they don't kick you out you stay in one city and every great thing comes to you everything from like you know symphonies and operas to singers or Iggy Pop who's like in the Lower East Side Blue Reed on and on and on Allen Ginsberg uh, Diamanda Gallas I run into her like twice a month she lives right across the street from me and the people and the energy and the restlessness, and the dirt, the smell, the death, <laughs> the sex, everything, everything about it. Everything, every single, it's the majestic cesspool is what it is. I hang around, I uh, mostly hang around in my, my friends' places and movie houses and on the phone. <laughs> or just, you know, I have a couple of restaurants that don't kick me out after hours. Some, because they need to, you know, they usually do kick you out because they need tables, but I can write there all night. And I hardly write at home unless it's in the morning. So being out and and my being out is really easy to do in New York, and my wanderlust is completely part of my hormonal imbalance. So it really serves me well. Where'd you first hear "Lilac Wine" and said, "Nina I have, Simone"? I have to do that, though. Do you remember when and where? And that oh, was sure, it? yeah, I was in my my apartment <sighs> listening. I'm just a big Nina Simone freak. And you said that's it. That's just one, no, 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 no. It's just, it wasn't an ultimate choice because I, I knew a lot of songs. Mm -hmm. I knew a lot of songs, other people's songs, and that was just one I wanted the guys to be able to be able to do. To be able to be able to. I just did some radio spots. God knows what I said in there. I'm really gonna make a mincemeat out of my own vocabulary here. Um, no, I just I love. Um, I used to do Judy Garland songs and all kinds of women's songs, but I thought that that was, that song in, in particular was a total man's song. Messing up with your lover and getting completely soused. No, because you cho you've chosen interesting cover songs there. Hallelujah, Leonard Cohen's, and then the, the Britain tune there. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Corpus Christi Carol was just a, something I would heard. And anything, actually anything really oral and classical, uh, I got from my friend Roy. And we've been friends since we were 14. Or no, 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 sin no that's, that's not true. Since we were in high school, but I think right around 16 or 17. Where was high school? Uh, all over the place, really, but mostly in Anaheim, you know, that hellhole in Southern California where Disneyland is. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he's like one of the only people uh, I've kept in my whole life, like kept in touch with, and, and I just decided to make a gift of it. And I thought it fit on the album. Hallelujah. I was just house-sitting for a friend, watching her cats while she was away, and I got into her whiskey and got into her record collection, and there was this, uh, you know, John Cale's version of Hallelujah. On the, I'm your fan, and I'm not. Uh, I'm not. You know, there there are how, there are Leonard Cohen enthusiasts, and, and it's I'm not, it's not it's not because of Leonard that I did the song. It's simply because of the song and because of the verses. I'm just in there somewhere. I have no, I have no blood bound allegiance to Leonard, although I have incredible admiration and real great love for his work. You know, it, there's a difference between somebody who's a total Tom Waits freak and uh -huh. just somebody who likes to listen to them and. You know, the Tom Waits freak will know everything, the demos, the back in the days when he used to sound like Billy Joel, blah, 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 here are the European demos, here are the, well, he didn't used to, but back when he was a bit smoother, you know, just knows everything. And I don't, I don't know everything about Leonard Cohen, and I haven't read Beautiful Losers, and I haven't done that, but it was just a great song. 
really just uh, very personal reasons for the choices actually and and not what you might think but I'll, you know, I'm happy to I'm happy to explain but it's pretty boring actually <laughs> <laughs> would you do another song yeah thanks sure thing. Say 
so soft against her Live Thank on you, yeah, Thank you. Great. That was great. Thanks a lot, Oedipus. Really, it was fabulous. So we'll see you tomorrow night at the Charles Playhouse? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was great. Jeff Buckley. Mm-hmm.